Hello everyone. August is like the few hours before friends or family come over for dinner. You're quickly tidying up, buying the ingredients, shoving the mess you don't know what to do with into the cupboard. There's so much to do and a fixed deadline, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you're like me, you're probably always caught a little by surprise when, when spring comes. There are quite a few things that need to be done to get the most out of spring, especially if we want our gardens to be looking their best by, by Christmas. I always think next year I'm going to get started a little bit earlier, and but then, I don't know, the lethargy of winter's cold weather lulls me into, into hibernation. So if you're always staring at your garden during the Christmas holidays and thinking, I should have gotten my garden sorted out, then, then this video is for you. In this video, we'll run through the main tasks that need to be done in the windy month. We'll look at fertilizing and pruning with a little bit of planting thrown in for good measure. At the end of the video, I'll point out a particularly invasive pest that strikes this time of year and, and how to spot it in time and how to get rid of it. I'll also give you a suggestion for the perfect tree for a small garden. So first up, August is usually the windiest month for the majority of Southern Africa. So you need to stake your newly planted trees or standards. I'm not a big fan of staking in general because I think plants should learn to stand on their own. But while plants are still acclimatizing to their new space or if they've been pruned in unnatural ways, then not staking is a mistake, if you'll excuse the pun. One of the biggest requests I have over this time of year is for spring treatment on lawns. The advice that's usually given is three things. To, to scarify, which is basically to scalp your lawn, aerate the soil, usually with a fork or heavy equipment, and then to top dress. And all that is good advice, but there's really no one-size-fits-all approach. Some lawns, particularly Kikuyu, Kersney, and Berea Shade, shouldn't ever be cut very short. And the main reason for scarifying is to remove thatch, which is a buildup of grass cuttings on the top of the soil. And, and this layer of dead grass can cause fungal growth and disease in your lawn. But the truth is that a little bit of vegetative matter is actually a good thing. So you don't need to go to the extreme of removing it unless you really have a serious problem with it. Scarifying also helps stimulate new growth in your grass. And, and this can just simply be done with a spade. Aerating your soil is also only necessary in extreme cases. This is mostly necessary when you have a high clay content in your soil and, and water doesn't drain away easily. Or if there's an area that gets a lot of traffic and, and you'll often notice algae or moss growing on the surface of the soil. And it'll often stay damp or, or even during dry periods you'll notice cracks in the soil surface. Only in these cases should you really be looking to aerate the soil. Also, this should never be done during wet weather, otherwise you can actually make the problem worse. This is the time for top dressing though. So there are, there are two types of top dressing. The main reason for top dressing is to feed your lawn and give it all the nutrients that it will need over the coming growing season. So a good quality weed-free compost is all that's needed for this. The other reason for top dressing is to fix any unevenness in your lawn. So, so for this you need a kind of 50-50 mix of topsoil and compost. The compost will slowly get absorbed into the soil, but the topsoil will stick around and fill in those hollows. Read the contents on the bag carefully before buying your top dressing or your lawn dressing to see what's actually in it. If you're not planning on doing any top dressing though, you could start feeding with something like LAN, LAN at 30 grams per square meter or even 515 at about 60 grams per square meter. It's also the time to start pruning roses so that they are ready for new buds in spring. And I'll do a basic video on how to prune roses in the coming weeks. It's also time to feed your roses with a, a good quality compost. The best way to do this is to just use the compost as a mulch on the surface around the roots. It's, it's best not to dig in around the plant because roses don't like having their roots disturbed. It's also an ideal time to do some rose planting if you're wanting to add any more into your garden. Frost is still an issue in some parts of the country and it's a key timing factor for many decisions in the garden in August. So. If you're deciding whether to plant annuals or other tender plants or when to prune generally, 
areas that are frost free can start from probably from the beginning of August. Summer rainfall areas that, that may experience frost, it's best to start towards the middle of the month. And areas with late frosts and winter rainfall areas, it's best to wait till next month. These guidelines would also be followed with cutting back any frost damage too. The purpose of, of cutting back of pruning at this time of year is really to clear away any dead growth and to allow light and air into the plant. But by pruning back, you're also stimulating the plant into action, telling it that it's time to start producing new growth. So by the time warmer weather arrives, the plants already have a bit of a head start. The other major task for August is feeding. Basically what you're looking to do now is to give the plants the, the nutrients that they're gonna need as they start putting all their energy and their resources into new leaves and buds. So, so right now, a general, all-purpose fertilizer like 232 is the ideal granular fertilizer to use but but you always want to use chemical fertilizers in combination with a good quality compost when you're fertilizing in flower beds you want to put about 60 grams per square meter which is about two handfuls per per meter try not to get any fertilizer onto the plants so that you minimize chemical burn Ideally, you should be sprinkling around the base of the plants, but it's not always possible in large flower beds. Um, around larger uh, shrubs, you should sprinkle around about 20 to 30 grams per plant. And around small trees, about 60 grams sprinkled around the root zone is ideal. The root zone, as a general rule, extends to the edges of the tree's canopy. Um, but as I said, this should all be done in combination with a good quality compost. Make sure you give your garden a really good soaking, especially after using chemical fertilizers. This helps the, the, the plant uh, absorb all the nutrients that you've, you've basically spread around. And watering around about now should be done probably about once a week. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I'm a really big believer in mulch. It's an absolute necessity in the garden. And now is as good a time as any to start adding mulch into your garden. Pests to be on the lookout for now are lily borer or amaryllis caterpillar. They, they have no enemies because they're largely unpalatable. Birds just don't like the taste of them. And these invasive caterpillars are really hard to spot because they, they lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves. And then they actually bore into the leaves of plants like uh, agapanthus or, or clivia and and, and other sort of strap-like leaves and very often into the leaves of bulbs and if they're left they'll just eat their way right down the leaf into the bulb and killing the entire plant. You can often spot them early by the type of damage that they're inflicting on the leaves and, and you can see their presence by the small dark green frass which is basically caterpillar poo around the leaves. So if you find them boring into the leaves the best thing to do is to just cut the plant right back, chop up the leaves, killing all the caterpillars if they're just one or two, you could try and eradicate them one by one, but usually they're in such uh, numbers that it's best to be just ruthless in cutting your plants back just to save them. My favorite plant at this time of year would have to be the Calpurnia aurea. It's, with, it's, it's got these pendulous yellow flowers. It's a great small tree that looks good for most of the year, and it's an ideal tree for a small garden. Bougainvilliers would have to be a close second as, the, as they're generally enjoying the drier weather around about now and they're flowering prolifically. A quick tip with Bougainvilliers if you're wanting them to flower is to just completely ignore them. I've often had clients have sworn that the moment they threaten to take the plant out because it's not doing anything it bursts into spectacular show of flowers as if it understands what they've said and that it has to pull out all the stops to stay alive. But the truth is Bougainvillier thrive on neglect. The less water, within reason, the better. So if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe if you aren't already. And also drop me a message if you have any questions that you want answered or any particular videos that you'd like to see. Otherwise, happy gardening.